Hi, Liz. Oh, hi, Tanya. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. Oh, my pleasure. So I was hoping you might be able to shed a little light on some do's and don'ts in terms of body language within marriages and for kind of keeping your relationship on solid ground. Right. That's such an excellent question. And the reason is because so often we lose sight once we get married, we tend to just go on autopilot right and we go through the day and we don't take care of what we need to do in order to keep that marriage solid so I always say to people you know what the best thing you could do is come off autopilot and take your husband out for a date date night is really important and there's a bunch of things that you could do to just simplistically keep the flame alive when you're out on date night so if you imagine you know you're out together in a restaurant and you're holding eye contact with your husband and then maybe you lean over and you touch him just gently on the hand and while you're doing this you know you're doing these little flirtatious techniques really all you're trying to do is keep the attention between the two of you right so you smile you tilt your head you touch your neck maybe because that's much more sensual and if you're wearing caress forever collection what winds up happening is you combine touch and fragrance and in doing so we know that that fragrance gets released for about 12 hours so Caress Forever is wonderful because it's one of the first body washes that combines touch and fragrance technology. And like I said, that'll last up to 12 hours. So just by doing that, what you're doing is igniting a fire between the two of you. Okay, great. And similarly, on that date night, in terms of body language, right. is there anything that you should definitely you know, avoid to kind of bring the romance to a halt? Yeah, one of the most important things that you need to realize is when you're on that date night, the only thing that matters is the connection between the two of you. So I always say to people, it doesn't matter what's going on to the left, if there's dishes being broken over there, you know, there's somebody walking by over there, you should just be focused on the two eye contact connection levels. So you want to make sure that that person, your husband, feels like the only person in the room. Oh, okay, that's great advice. And I guess for couples who've been married a little bit longer, let's say, who have an issue or two pop up every now and again, is there a way, let's say something's on your mind and you want to raise the issue, but you want to come off, you know, not as combative? Is there right. a body language pose or stance that you can use to kind of come up come across as, you know, reasonable and not like you're on the attack? You know, I love that question because I think what happens so often is we automatically go on the attack, we automatically go and get defensive. So if you're having issues and one of the reasons you're going out is to kind of, like I said, reignite that fire and you want to address some key issues, the best thing to do is once again, a little bit more submissive pose. And I know this sounds like an obnoxious thing to say submissive, but what you're doing is you're showing that person maybe your palms and your forearms and you're leaning towards them and the touch makes a difference so if you think about this again if you imagine you're in a argument you're having an argument but you subtly lean over and just touch and hold eye contact with your husband and it kind of breaks down the barrier and once you have that emotional connection once you've touched them automatically they're going to feel better about you and they're going to want to have open communication so that touch is really important oh okay sure that makes a lot of sense that is great. And then let's say you're the person. Let's say your husband comes home and he has an issue. You know, you, he's gotten the credit card bill and, you know, maybe you didn't mention that dress that you bought. Is there anything that you can do with your body language to sort of diffuse that problem before rather than escalate it? You want to make sure that you're getting, you're standing close enough to him to feel the connection and you want to make sure that your body is angled towards him. The reason for that is because if you angle away, then it's almost as if you want to get away from that conversation. You want to step away. Way. So what you want to do is you want to make him realize that you feel it. And so the closer you get to him, we they've done studies that prove the closer two people in a marriage stand to one another, the better their relationship is. So if you're having an issue that you need to address, the best thing that you can do is get so close to him that he feels the intimacy, but not overpower or overwhelm him by threatening him with that closeness. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. It definitely does. Good. Thank you. And then, you know, at the store, we're big fans of The Bachelorette. And uh, I was just wondering, based on body language, I know it's coming down to the wire between right. Caitlin and Nick versus Sean. Is there anything that you've witnessed? I know all those spoilers are out there, but anything you can say that you've seen throughout the season to tell us which way Caitlin will lean in her final Rose decision? No, there really hasn't been much that I could discern that would tell who she might choose. But one of the things you have to realize is women are looking for more of a dominant poser. So if 
you're watching the body language of him, and that's plural, you need to see who's doing the dominant pose, who is the man that she'll look at and be like, hey, he's got it going on as opposed to, well, he just really wants to be the submissive guy in this relationship. Oh, that's really interesting. Well, Tanya, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. This has been so insightful. Thank you very much. Have a great day.